first episode, we had the great shootout where we challenged two professional photographers to hunt and photograph animals found over 200 years ago in the collection. Then we went atas for the second episode and conducted a bartending session where we engaged an award-winning bartender to mix one-of-a-kind cocktails for us using only plants and fruits as ingredients from the collection. Like the animals in the great shootout, some of these plants have thrived up to today. Singapore started off as a small fishing village and has grown to become an important maritime nation. Gone are Singapore's vast swaths of mangrove swamps. They are replaced by port facilities and have been urbanised. But we are definitely improving with places like Sungai Buloh, being a conservation area and having quite a pristine mangrove swamp. So in this episode called Fakas Fishers, we're going out to sea. Hi, we're here today at the Broad Jetty to see if any of the anglers got anything from the Faka collection. Fun fact, this is the Talang Queen fish that can be found in the Faka collection. Here you go. Same, eh? Madam know if her husband here mentions that they have caught a stingray which weighed a whopping 20 kilograms. Mr. Kamsani says that he has seen the puffer fish and the rare queenfish. Then he also mentions that he has caught the shark sucker before, which is very rare. This lady here is catching the blue swimmer crab. She mentioned that she has also seen the puffer fish around this area. Darwin, a young angler who comes here twice a year with his dad, has caught juvenile queenfishes and has also seen people catch ikan parang and stingrays. Now that we know what people have caught from shore, let's go out to sea. Hi, I'm here with avid angler, YouTuber, Conrad from Sea Lifestyle and I'll join him for today to see what species we can find in Singapore waters. So are you ready? Yeah, let's go. Okay man, let's, let's go, go man. Let's go, man. Giant sea perch. Yeah. And the lady call it. You can check out, right? Yeah. Yes, see that's the right. Top fin. Oh, wonderful. Wow. Conrad, having seen the fish segment uh, in the collection, what are your initial thoughts of it? Well, I was like quite amazed uh, yeah. that even 200 years ago they could quite accurately mm. draw all these fish that we are seeing and and I actually see so many of these still around today. Yeah, so I was quite uh, pleasantly surprised. Okay, okay, fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so do you think that uh, it is a myth because Singapore is so urbanised that our biodiversity isn't as rich as our neighbouring countries like Malaysia, Thailand or, or Indonesia? No, actually I think we are very fortunate to be situated right at the southernmost tip of the peninsula, Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we get the waters from the Johor Strait and the South China Sea meeting the Indian Ocean and the Malacca Strait and making our waters uh, really rich in marine species. So we get a lot of species of fish and uh, marine life to look forward to. Okay, okay. Yeah. So um, which are the fishes in the collection? Have you come across during your fishing trips around Singapore? Uh, I mean, <laughs> if you ask me this, I, I would say I've come across almost every fish here. Okay. 
Yeah, so it's hard to say except maybe that that sawfish. Uh. Sawfish. Yeah, sawfish. there's this. Yeah, this and and this <laughs> this wing, wing head, head shark. Oh, looks like a yeah, hammerhead shark. Yeah, it looks. Uh, I've never seen that. Uh, okay, okay. In so, our waters. Okay, so another question is: uh, Do different fishing spots give you and uh, bring you different fishes as well? Yeah, of course. Yeah, because uh, for instance, today we are fishing in the northern part of Singapore, yep. where we get a lot of fresh water from the rivers, mm -hmm. like Johor River coming in, and uh, when it mixes with the salt water, we get what you call brackish water fish, right? And that's why we get the barramundi, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, like the toadfish and the soldier catfish and the croaker. Okay, so we get a lot of those in, in this type of water. I see. I yeah, see. but if we go to our southern islands. Wow, the, where the water is cleaner and there's a lot of coral reef. Okay, uh, we get parrotfish. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. the okay. colorful reef species, mm -hmm. and we even get the coral trout, and and we can get this uh, Spanish flag snappers over there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, sounds interesting. Yeah. Okay, but I think looking at the weather at this point, um, I'm not sure what else. What can we do, or what where can we actually go from here? I don't know, man. It looks, it looks quite bad. <laughs> My initial idea was to go to the easternmost tip yeah? of okay. Pulau Ubin uh -huh. to catch some of this uh, queen fish. Because okay, there's a school that like uh, that likes to play there. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, and okay. Uh, yeah, but the weather is quite bad over there. It looks mm. like it's raining there. Yeah. Uh, so I think we have to head inwards. Okay. And maybe to see what else we can get. Okay, sure. Yeah. Let's give it a go then. Okay, man. okay. Let's, let's go. After almost six hours of fishing, we managed to land around seven fishes from the book. It's interesting to note that despite Singapore's highly urbanized coastline and extremely busy shipping lanes, the fishes show their tenacity and are still thriving even after 200 years when Parker studied them and commissioned them to be drawn by local artists. I guess survival is a very basic instinct of all creatures. Okay, let's okay, go. Let's man. go. Woo! Oh, what a day. Man, what a day. Yeah. <sighs> okay, uh, so well, our fishing expedition has ended for today. Uh, we had so much fun. And um, so I would like to thank Conrad uh, for bringing us around uh, today. And um, it's nice to know that uh, after 200 years, we can still see the different uh, fishes around and it uh, kind of shows that it is still available from uh, the William Fokker collection. How many did we catch again? I think we caught about 10 fish. 10 fishes, yes. And, and uh, about 6 or 7 six were or from, seven from the, the collection. collection. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that was fantastic for us. And uh, just to note, uh, do practice uh, catch and release. Uh, so for the future generations, maybe in the next 200 years, our younger generations might be able to see the same species as we did today. So we had so much fun. Uh, thank you so much. I heard that the plans for the third episode will make my pet goldfish look like a small fry. Well, that was a real gutsy movie, Iman. You could have ended up catching nothing, but your gamble paid off, so well done. Yeah, good job, Iman. And with that, this series of Finding Farker has come to an end. But we have more ideas, such as taking an in-depth look at the plants in the collection. Or we could venture out of Singapore to Malaysia, or even beyond. Yes, further up north, I wonder what fishes I could catch. So your likes, shares and comments are really important to us as we start planning for our second series of Finding Farka. And while waiting for the second series of Finding Farka to be released, come down to the National Museum and take a look at the actual drawings on display at the Go Sing Chu Gallery. That's right, nothing beats seeing the real thing. Thanks for watching. Uh, this, big, this is even bigger. Uh, it's huge.